Welcome to today's video. We are thrilled to introduce to you our Live Sync Blender workflow with the brand new D5 Converter for Blender. Watch this tutorial to easily get started and see how we made this architectural visualization using Blender D5 workflow. First off, download the D5 Converter Blender from our official website d5render.com or go to workflow page in your D5 render. Unzip the file to install the plugin. Once that is done, open your Blender and go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type D5 and enable the D5 Converter for Blender. By doing so, you'll see the D5 Converter for Blender tab pop up in the upper right corner of the interface which consists of D5 Export, D5 Link, and Material Bake. Here's the Blender model. For modeling, we referred to the red hole located in Seoul, South Korea. Materials have been assigned separately in Blender, so just hit sync to start D5 render and synchronize the models from Blender to D5. While live sync is on, click on the link view button to keep the view of Blender and D5 render consistent. Click on send cameras to sync all the Blender cameras into D5 scene list. Add a light in Blender, and click on Send Lights to synchronize it with its name, location, and lighting parameters into D5 Render. For grouped lights, you can adjust their intensity, attenuation radius, light source radius, temperature parameters, or decide whether they stay visible in reflection. When a model has been edited in Blender, you can sync that updated model and materials alone to D5 Render by clicking on Sync while keeping the materials and scene parameters that had been adjusted in D5 render. You see the handrail was modeled by applying wireframe modifier to a plane. And part of it appears inside the stairs, so I'll just edit its location and hit sync to sync the change to D5. In this blender scene, you can see that the utility pole was not synced into D5. And that is because it was modeled using geometry nodes instanced with curve lines for which D5 does not support direct sync yet. You can first convert the curves into meshes, and then sync again. Now the whole model is imported into D5. Move on to environment adjustment in D5. Here we want the sky to have a bit of gray tone to demonstrate the after rain atmosphere. First, turn off auto exposure, Import the HDRI you need, and rotate it to a proper angle. Then adjust the skylight intensity, setting a proper tone for the overall lighting. Turn on precipitation in environment, weather, and adjust its strength to zero so that puddles appear on the street. I think I've achieved the desired effect now. Next, let's adjust the materials for a more realistic rendering. For now, D5 Converter Blender supports the material mapping of principled BSDF glass BSDF and diffuse BSDF. Materials of these types can be synced directly from Blender to D5. To highlight the red bricks and tiles paved on the building facade and stairs, you can use the procedural textures to blend the materials in Blender. In this way, each brick will show different details in textures. However node groups cannot be synchronized to D5 directly, so the textures need to be baked first. When baking is done, click on Sync and they'll be transferred to D5 as normal materials with PBR channels. For other models in the scene, you can directly use the materials from D5 Asset Library. For example, drag and drop the normal glass onto the window. With a few adjustments of its parameters, you'll get a clear glass with beautiful reflection. For the facade, select white concrete wall paint. Turn on triplanar and adjust its UV. Switch on round corner in D5 to make the corner more realistic. For 
For the building's handrail, I'll still use a metal material from D5 Asset Library and adjust its color to a brownish red. Again, one click round corner. This is a very handy tool in D5. Another tip is that after adjusting a material from D5 Asset Library properly, you can use the shortcut key I to copy it, and shortcut key O to paste it on other surfaces to save time. Material adjustment reveals the details, so here I'll continue with other parts of the scene. The ground seems a bit bright, you can see in Blender some nodes affecting the base color of the ground material, which can't be directly mapped into D5 for now. This is when you need to bake them using D5 Converter Blender. You can bake all the materials with one click, or choose just some of them to bake. Choose the texture resolution you need, and turn on Auto UV, which works like the Smart UV project in Blender, to bake material nodes into several texture maps. When baking is completed, you can click on Sync in D5 Converter to import these maps into D5 Render. Opening blend files directly in D5 is not supported at the moment, but with D5 Converter Blender, you can save them as D5A files which can be read by D5. For example, to import this spherical environment map from Blender into D5, click on Export to D5A, then Export Selection. Done! It's ready to use in D5 Render. Now, some plants are still missing in this scene. This is where D5 makes work so much easier. Browse through D5 Asset Library, and there's plenty of stuff to choose from. Some trees? Brushed grass? Bushes? See what you need in this scene, and I'm sure you'll find them in D5. After setting proper camera views in the scene list, try breathing life to the scene by adding characters and interior parallax assets from D5 model library. Now you are all set to render images or animations with the format and resolution you want. For animation, find the ideal shots and DOF effect for each clip. For image rendering, check material ID, AO or other channels that you need to export. Click on Render to start rendering right away, or add them to Render Queue for batch rendering. That completes our tutorial for Blender D5 workflow. Thanks for watching.